Apple Incorporation, the most valuable tech company in the world. Apple is known for its cutting edge technology and most importantly for its iPhone. It's the ultimate cash cow for Apple. It contributes to 50% of their revenues. In America, they are the most successful smartphone brand with 45% of the smartphone users using some variant of iPhone. But when it comes to India, it's just not working. Apple is struggling to gain market share. But why? Let's understand in today's episode. On August 22nd, 2008, crowds gathered at phone stores across India to catch the glimpse of new iPhone 3G launch, the first ever smartphone to be sold in the country. The iPhone made a flashy and highly anticipated entrance into Indian market, where Apple sold devices through Indian carriers, Bharati Airtel and Vodafone India. Apple thought India will be a good source of growth, but more than a decade into Indian market, Apple is still struggling to gain the market share. India is totally different from the other western markets where Apple is successful. Indian smartphone market can be divided into three segments, low range, mid range and premium smartphone segment. Low and mid range is dominated by players like Xiaomi, Oppo and Vivo. Premium segment is where Apple directly competes with OnePlus and Samsung. India is a price sensitive market where price plays a major role in deciding whether to buy a product or not and Apple is not good at providing their products at low price. The average price of a smartphone in India is 12,500 rupees and whereas the latest iPhone 12 Pro is launched in India at 1,19,000 rupees. I understand it's not a fair comparison but it gives an understanding of how Apple's products are placed at other end of the spectrum. Apple is competing in premium smartphone segment and its competitors Samsung and OnePlus are providing their best premium smartphones at half the price of Apple's premium smartphone. That puts Apple at disadvantage. One of the most important reasons for higher prices of iPhone in India is taxes. Apple iPhone itself is costly and on top of that Indian government charges 20% import duty on all the smartphones imported from foreign country. It also means that the price of iPhone goes up by 20% once it enters into Indian territory. These higher taxes leads to a development of grey market where iPhones are smuggled from foreign countries to avoid taxes, ultimately hampering Apple's business in India. Another reason why Apple is struggling in India is because simply there are not enough buyers. The market for phones that cost more than 30,000 is just 7% of the Indian smartphone market and that is dominated by OnePlus followed by Samsung. Even if Apple were to get 100% market share in the premium space, which is highly unlikely, it would still command only 7% of the market. Premium smartphone segment is growing, but it can never dominate the Indian market. Mid-range smartphone segment is the king for now. Apple did try to enter into the mid-range market, but its hardware is not up to the mark for Indian consumer. Three of the iPhones which are available below 30,000 are iPhone SE, iPhone 6 and iPhone 7. With the entry of Reliance Geo in India in the late 2016, Indians have developed an interesting habit of consuming video on the go. Having a large screen really adds to the experience, but these three smartphones come with less than 5 inch screen, whereas brands like Xiaomi and Realme are providing a screen starting from 6 inch under the same price. Another component that consumers in mid-range segment look for is battery backup. And Apple is known for anything but its battery. Network conditions in India are often quite poor connectivity-wise, which results in smartphones consuming more battery. Apple iPhones have never been known for battery life. The most famous budget iPhone in India, iPhone SE, has a meager 1821 mAh battery while phones half of its price are pushing for battery packs that are more than double the size. Apple also suffers from not having official Apple store in India. This has mainly to do with government regulations, where to open an official store, the foreign company needs to source at least 30% of the raw materials from India, and Apple sources almost all its components from China. But somehow, Apple was able to convince the government and got special permission to open its store. The first official Apple store will open in 2021 in India. 
While Apple is still working on its official store, its competitors OnePlus is aggressively expanding its official stores, providing first-class experience to its customers. It has the first more advantage. The market for AirPods, Apple Watch and other Apple services are directly dependent on the sales of iPhone. Other Apple products like Apple iPad, MacBook doesn't have a good market share either. But what did Apple do to improve its market position in India? Apple started assembling iPhones in India with the original iPhone SE in 2017. The iPhone was then already a couple of years old but still popular in India because of its lower price point. Over the next two years, Apple moved the assembly of iPhone 6, 7, XR and iPhone 11 to India. In 2019, Apple stopped production of original iPhone SE and iPhone 6, mainly because sales were going down. But will producing in India bring down the price? The answer is no. The reason why prices won't be impacted by local production. For one, the phones are only being assembled in India and there is hardly any local sourcing of components. So the cost of production is not exactly coming down. Second, Apple is still not capable of meeting entire demand for certain models with locally produced units. This means they will still have to import some of its iPhones and hence it would not be possible to sell the made in India units at lower cost. So what is Apple's strategy here in India? Let's hear from Apple CEO Tim Cook. For us, we're about making the best product that enriches people's lives. And so we're not about making the cheapest, okay. right? We, will, we want to make a great value, but, but that's not necessarily the cheapest. And so for us, what we've seen is there's enough people in every country in the world that we play in that we can have a really good business by selling the best phone. Okay. What Tim Cook is trying to say is that they are not trying to target mass market like other Chinese companies. They want to target small group which is loyal to or interested in Apple products. But how long they can survive doing that? If we move away from Indian market and look at how Apple is performing at a global level, picture is not so good. If you look at the chart of Apple's annual sales worldwide, 2015 was the record year when Apple sold 231 million units of iPhone. And after that, Apple stuck. Sales are just not growing. And after 2018, Apple stopped publishing the data about number of units sold worldwide. Apple still makes profit, even when the number of units sold is coming down, mainly by charging higher prices. Every new iPhone costs more than the previous one. But they cannot go on increasing the prices. At some point, they'll have to stop. Apple is a public company and to sustain the market value, they have to show continuous profits to its shareholders. They'll have to come up with a new product to compensate for the fall in iPhone sales. They cannot depend on US market, it is saturated and Apple will have to find a new market to be successful. And it looks like India is not one of them. So that's the video guys. If you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to smash that bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching. This is Curious Monk signing off.